Uh, David Williams, you're the CEO and co-founder of VeloSurance. You're one of the original players, and it sounds like you're nationwide. Can you just, you know, expand on that a little bit and give me a quick, like, history of the company? Bicycle insurance is not a, a new concept. Uh, it's new in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very big in the U.K., and it's very big in Australia. We had dealt with Markel in general insurance for over 15 years, and when I conceived the idea of Velassurance, uh, I took the idea to Markel, and Markel liked the concept. They ran with it, and it took them over three years to get the policy accepted by all of the insurance departments in every state. So. You know, I, there are all these questions floating through my mind. I've had cars, a regular car, and, and you like have to get insurance in a lot of states because such a it's a big thing. And not only is it expensive and it could get damaged, you could damage other people's property. Now, when we're talking about electric bikes now specifically, you know, as I, I run electricbikereview.com, right? So that's kind of where I'm interested in. And they're more expensive, so you're spending like three thousand bucks for a bike. I mean, that's like that's like a used car right there. So. You know, what does the product offer and how does this work? Congress considers a pedal assist or an electric assist bike up to 750 watts mm -hmm. still remains a bicycle. Yeah. Uh, the homeowner companies and renter companies, if it's got a motor, they don't want to know about it. There's this new movement towards like speed pedelec bikes that can hit like 28 miles per hour when you're pedaling, right? The, the idea being like, well, you can pedal that fast, so why can't the bike help you? And you've got like the specialized turbo, the Stromer bikes, and some of the, the IZIP bikes, like the E3 Dash. Are those covered under your policies too? Or Yes. Cool. So it's, it's, it's up to 750 watts. Okay. After, seven, after 750 watts, we're out of the game. In addition to the bike, like, can you also... Does it also cover accessories and stuff? I mean, I've poked around the website, and you can spend a lot on lights and GPS units and, you know, different things like that on your bike. Yeah, well, that's one of the biggest questions we get asked is, how much should I insure my bike for? Okay. You know, I, I paid 3000 for it, but now I've added a whole bunch of stuff to it. And our answer is, when you get ready to step on that bike, how much is it worth at that point in time? And that's how much you should insure it for. Okay. Can we do like a build-out scenario? Depending on where you are, the, the country is divided into three tiers. Mm -hmm. Southern, where you can ride 12 months of the year. Central, where you can probably ride 12 months of the year, but there may be some days you don't want to step out the front door. Yeah. And Northern, where you spend six months riding and six months ice fishing. Yeah. Got it. So... It really depends on where you are, but if you are in North Carolina, a yeah. uh, hundred bucks will buy you a policy on about a twelve to fifteen hundred dollar bike. Okay. So, you know, if to use a ballpark figure for everywhere in the country, I would say seven percent, seven and a half percent of the value of the bike. So if you've got a $3,000 bike, somewhere around 200 bucks a year to insure the bike against physical damage and theft. Okay. What, what about the whole, you know, that liability piece? Because for me, let's say I have that $1,500 entry-level bike. If, if I don't, you know, that's replaceable, but if I, like, scrape someone's car or something yeah. or I hit someone on the bike path, like, that could be a big deal. The technical aspect of liability is... For we will pay on your behalf those sums that you become legally liable for. Hmm. Now, when someone says legally liable for, okay, now that brings a courtroom into it, hmm. or at least a lawsuit into it. So, in order for you to, in order for liability to kick in, th th there's attorneys involved at that point. Okay. So you, you, yeah, you're riding down the road, you crash into the guy's $300,000 Ferrari yeah. and, and his insurance company pays for him but says, hey, who is this guy that crashed into you and what's he got? They came after you for $12,000 repair. And here's where it gets weird. If you were on, if you were on your regular uh, trek 
pedal bicycle, and yeah. you did that, your homeowner's insurance company would step in and pay it for you. Hmm. That's cool. But because your bike now has a motor, yeah. motor, you will find that a lot of homeowner's companies will either exclude it or deny your coverage because you didn't tell them that it had a motor. Hmm. You know, and insurance companies, with the exception of Markel, of course, insurance companies are not kind and benevolent companies. They have a bottom line that they have to meet. They have shareholders that they have to make money for. Sure. So they're very persistent about what they will and won't pay. Mm -hmm. And if their contract doesn't specifically pay the, say that they're going to pay for your electric bike damage, they're not going to. So, but you guys would in that case with like the twelve thousand dollar. Yeah, it's about forty-two bucks a year to buy uh, twenty-five thousand in in cycling liability. Okay. It only covers you when you're riding the bike itself. Okay. Uh, but the most important thing about buying liability is you're buying a defense. Yeah. You, you yeah. no, I don't know about you, but I can't afford a four hundred dollar an hour attorney. Car insurance companies don't want to cover it because it doesn't have a VIN number. Ah, I see. And and homeowners insurance companies won't cover it because they consider it like a motorcycle or a scooter yeah. that should be insured by your car insurance company. So you caught between these two companies that have these rules that won't allow them to insure something as sensible as a bicycle with an electric assist motor in it. It is sort of a gray area. And you know, people want to be safe and and cover themselves and being responsible here. Um, it's just it's interesting. I'd heard a story about someone who there was a flood near their house and the flood wrecked the house, but like a tree fell over on their house and the insurance company was like, "Oh, we don't cover trees falling on your house," you know. And it was like, "Ah, oh, what do you mean? The tree fell because of the flood?" Or you know. So um, anyway, that's just a side note. But it's nice to feel like there's a a company out there that's focused on this. And then the other thing was travel, because a lot of people with the folding electric bikes, they put them on their boats, their RVs, they take them on planes, and then now they're not home, right? Is that covered? Like, yeah, we can do world. We do worldwide coverage. Uh, it's a, it it runs about ten percent of the premium. So you know, if you have a two hundred and fifty dollar premium to insure your uh, bike that you're going to take over to England and tour around the countryside on mm -hmm. uh, cost you another 25 bucks. Okay, and that's worldwide. What if you're just in the U.S.? Like, I live in Colorado. If I go to Arizona on a trip, do I need the worldwide coverage? or? No, you don't need to tell us. You're automatically covered in the U.S. and Canada. I noticed on the website, you know, I was reading through your frequently asked questions. It's a pretty, pretty cool page, and it said, you know, you're covered for racing. I don't know too many people who do electric bike racing at this stage but you're also just like regular bicycle insurance and there are a lot of athletes who do like triathlons and so that was nice to see um the the other thing i noticed in that section was that like if you're a bicycle messenger say in new york city where you've got a lot of people who actually do use electric bikes and there's legal controversy if you're using it for a per professional means like then it's not covered is that right that's right we we are strictly personal use coverage the risk of commercial use is dramatically different than someone who's a, a weekend fitness rider. We just can't cover that risk. There's another type of bike out there. It's not a full electric bike. It's an electric trailer. It's called the Ride Kick, and I think there are others too, but would that be covered somehow? We're still working on that. Okay. Uh, if, if it could be considered an accessory mm -hmm. that is connected to the bike, then it will be insured but it's still something that we've only just become aware of the ride kick cool. and we're working with the underwriters to see how and if it will be covered so what's your process like if a bike is stolen or is wrecked or something so uh, when you have a damage first thing you do is you call Vel Assurance. Mm -hmm. we handle all the claims through our office you call us we know what the claims department at Markel needs, so we put the claim package together. So when we send it to them, it's complete. They don't need to ask for anything else. Cool. Uh, we have everything in your file. We send it to them with a statement and a loss notice. 
So you damage your bike, take it to a trusted partner shop, they give you a repair estimate, you give the repair estimate to us with photographs of the damage, that becomes part of your claim file that gets sent to the insurance company. The bike is covered for any type of direct physical loss. If you lay your bike down, you hit a rock, you hit a tree, you hit something else, you damage the bike, that was accidental, it's covered. Yeah. If your tires wear out, that's not accidental. Yeah. We, we knew they were going to wear out the day we bought them. Yeah. <laughs> so that sort of stuff is not covered. Is the original value of your bike insured and do you get that money? Can you explain how that works? Yeah, if it's $4,000 today and it goes away in five years' time, it's still $4,000. We do not depreciate the value of the bike over time. What is the deductible on these plans, too? Is that... It's, you, you have a choice of $100, $200, $300, or $500. The $300 deductible is the best deal. Mm -hmm. It's where you see the best savings. Um, of course, the $500, the $500 deductible is the lowest premium. Yeah. But if it's only $20 difference between 500 and 300 and you ever had a claim and you got a $200 difference, that's 10 years. You have to dig out of that $200 hole at 20 bucks a year. What about friends riding the bikes? The policy is a permissive use policy, okay. which means that you can loan your bike to anyone you want to. If you have liability, if you have medical, then they are insured as if they were the owner of the bike. That's awesome, and I, I call that out with regards to electric bikes specifically because since they're still kind of a new technology in America and people are like, what is that? You know, I, I just know that there are more of these situations where you're like, give it a try, and they're like, ah, you know. You, yeah. So um, it's great to hear that. Uh, I, I think that that alone is, is a, a really great benefit of the product. One of the most important coverages for anyone who rides a bike to have, if they have an auto policy, is to have uninsured motorist coverage on the auto policy. Yeah. Not many people know that the uninsured motorist coverage on an auto policy covers you no matter what you're doing. In order for your uninsured motorist to kick in, there has to be contact between you and the other car, and the other car has to have no insurance, little insurance, or be a hit and run, and that other car, if they hang around, has to receive a ticket in order for you to show that it was their fault. For those people who don't own cars and do, who don't have uninsured motorists, our policy has an optional coverage called vehicle contact protection, which is medical payments up to $25,000 if you are, once again, injured with by contact with a car. Everyone at Vell Assurance is a cyclist. We all know what you're talking about. We look at every quote request that comes in. We look at it and analyze it. And we make sure that no one is ever quoted on a policy that could duplicate coverages that they already own somewhere else. In other words, if we look at your application and you've requested vehicle contact protection, but you live in California where you more than likely own a car, we would take that out of the quote and then send you an email and tell you what we've done Neat. and ask you to tell us if we did the right thing. I appreciate the time. Okay, Court. Good to see you. Good to uh, talk with you. and Thanks for hanging out with Vell Assurance.